Hey, what's up everyone? It's Jake. Once again, we're going to cover another problem today, and this one is called least missing positive number. Suppose we're given an array like the following on the screen. So we have const unsorted equals 0, 3, negative 1, negative 2, and 1. We're going to want to find the least positive number that's missing from the array. So at a first glance, given that this array is unsorted, you can already tell that by shifting some numbers around, if this array were sorted, it would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. So if it were sorted, you could easily tell that we're missing 2. And so 2 right here is the least missing positive number. But if we were given this unsorted array, how would we determine what the least missing positive number is? And one of the constraints that we add to this problem is that this has to be done in O of n linear time. As we said before, if you were to be able to sort it and get something like this, it's pretty easy. We could just compare each element with the one prior or the one after and see if the difference is one to get the least missing positive number. But because it's unsorted and we have to get this to run in O of n linear time complexity, we probably won't be able to use most sorting algorithms which run in n, n times log n complexity. So let's see if we could figure out a way to do this without resorting to sorting first. Let's start building the intuition for how to solve this problem by examining how a sorted array could be processed in order to find the least missing positive number. So in this diagram that we have in front of us, we have this array that's sorted already, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. Now, we know that if we have this range from negative 2 to 3, then the numbers in it are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 2 is the number that we're missing. Now, I want you to contrast this array that we have with the array of the range of numbers that should be there. Notice how we can kind of line up certain numbers, so negatives 2 and negative 2, negative 1 and negative 1, 0 and 0, 1 and 1, and then we can line up 3 and 3, but there's nothing to line 2 up with, which is interesting. Now, the other thing to note is that these numbers are relatively small. And we don't care about negative numbers. So because of that, one thing we can take advantage of is the fact that array indices start at 0 and move upwards. So we can use a property of the array data structure in order to accomplish our task. So two pieces of intuition that we can take away from looking at this diagram is this sense of lining up or mapping the numbers to the appropriate number in the range that it should be, as well as this idea of potentially using the indices of an array in order to map certain numbers, given that we only care about the positive numbers. Let's try to use these two techniques in conjunction. Again, the two techniques or the two pieces of intuition or the two hints that we are starting to see is, one, because we only care about positive numbers, we can disregard the negatives in the array, and two, the array indices start at zero, and thus, we know at every index what number to essentially put there in order to have the number and the index line up properly. So we can use these two techniques in one and try our best, see what we can do to line up the positive numbers with the array indices because the array indices are sorted and as such, we can use them in order to map the indices directly to the positive numbers and then eventually use that mapping to find out what number is missing. The way we're going to achieve this is by using this swapping that 
is laid out here. Now, this looks super confusing, but let me break it down before we uh, walk through it via debugger and clarify everything that's happening. So we're going to iterate through the array, and then at every element, we're going to first check if it's positive, because like we've said, we don't care about negative numbers. Then if it is positive, we're going to make sure that we're not at the very end. So if we were to be given a full array and there is no positive number missing, then the least positive number that's missing would be the next one. So let's say we had negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three, then we would return four because that's the next least positive missing number. So we make sure that the current number is shorter than the length of the array. And then finally, and this step might confuse people, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check that nums i, so the element that we're currently processing, if we convert that to a number and then subtract one, what this does is suppose this is three, we do three minus two and then look at nums. The number at index two for nums should not equal three. The check is, does the number at the second index equal three? And the reason is, and we're going to cover this in a bit, again, we're trying to line up the numbers. And at index zero, we would like to see one. At index one, we would like to see two. So here we have some code that's not yet the full solution, but it does implement this swapping bit, which is just a helper method that swaps two indices of an array. And then we have this iterator function with the condition that we had outlined just now. So let's see what's happening. We feed it this unsorted array, 0, 3, negative 1, negative 2, and 1. And we know that 2 is missing. And I've uh, commented out this sorted one that we had gone through earlier. So we're just going to process this unsorted array. Now, when we enter here, and I put this extra line, cur, C-U-R-R, so we can track which number is being processed at each step. As we iterate through, cur right now is zero because we start off at zero. And we check, is cur greater than zero? No, it's not. So we're going to skip it. We're going to process the next number. The next number is three. So we're here. So here's the biggie. Is three greater than zero? Yes. It's a positive number, so we care about it. Is three less than the length of unsorted? So unsorted is one, two, three, four, five five elements, and three is indeed less than five. Now, the biggie. Three, which is I of unsorted, so three minus one is two. So we look at the second index of unsorted, so right here, the second index in the third position, and we look at it and we check if it's equal to three. If it's not, we do a swap of the current number, which is three, and that number, which is negative one. So we're gonna swap three and negative one. Now let's see, let's see that happen. So, after swapping three and negative one, what's happened? Notice we've now gotten three in the second position. And this is helpful because three being in the second position means that we know or we would expect two to be in the first position and one in the zeroth position. Now, that might not be clear, so let's keep going. Now we're at the next index and we see three again. So we're now we're processing i is i of two and we're at three again. 
So again, we're going to go through this condition. And now we're going to check 3 minus 1, so it's 2. So now this does equal this, so we're not going to sort, and we're going to go back out. And now we're going to process negative 2. So now we're here. We're going to process negative 2, and it's not positive, so we're going to skip it. And now we're going to process here. Now we're at the very end, we're going to process 1. And we check that 1 is positive. We check that 1 is less than 5. And now 1 minus 1 is 0. So we look at the 0th element of unsorted. And we check that it does not equal 1. And it does not equal 1. So we go into this condition. And what we're going to do is we're going to swap 1 and 0. We're going to do the swap. So that might have all been confusing, but ultimately, look what's happened. We said we wanted the element at every 0 plus 1th index, at least for the positive numbers, and that's what we have. We have 1 at 0. We have 3 at 2. And these two positive numbers, which are the only positive numbers that we care about, they line up with the indices because their value is just the index plus 1. And so we end up, after running this for loop, we end up with 1, negative 1, 3, negative 2, and 0. And so you might be asking, how is this helpful? What we can do now is iterate through this array. And as we go through this array, we can check if the value is the index plus 1. In this case, it is. Here is the value the index plus 1. No, it's not. So now we can return 2 because we don't keep that pattern up. We expect 1, 2, and 3 to be here, but instead we get negative 1. We get 1, negative 1, and 3. And so that's how this works. And for this last section, let's just go over the entire solution at this point. And so this ends up being an O of n's linear time solution without sorting. There is the semblance of sorting, but it's not really a proper sort because the final um, outcome of this condition, of this for loop, does not actually result in a sorted array. What we're doing is we're arranging the positive numbers to line up with the indices. As we've just seen, this will result in all the positive numbers being in the i plus 1th position for the array. And then we can iterate through the mutated array, the semi, you could call it semi-sorted array, and then we check that the number at j equals j plus 1. And we return the first number that fits that condition. So in, in the previous example, it was 2. Otherwise, if everything looks good, we return the next positive number up, which is the least missing positive number. All right, hopefully that made sense. If you have any more questions, please post in the discussion. And thanks for watching.